And what? I got to ask you, Shannon Sharp. Yes. Did, did anybody ever call you the B word during a football game? Surely they did not, because yeah. nobody would even Skip. think of that Skip. word in your context. Skip. The only person that I can think of that they would not say that to in all my time of playing was the late, great Reggie White. You would never call him out of his name. You would never curse. You couldn't, re you couldn't curse around him oh, I got because it. he, you know. I know. But anybody else? Absolutely. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. An ordained minister since the age of 17, Reggie White preached the gospel throughout his NFL career. And I look at the best defensive player that ever played the game. I don't put myself number one. I'm looking at Reggie White as number one. On the field, he was considered one of the most feared and electrifying pass rushers in NFL history, an offensive coordinator's nightmare, unquestionably one of the most fierce and dominant pass rushers of his generation. Off the field, he was a true ambassador of the NFL, a warm-hearted humanitarian with a well-publicized and sometimes controversial ministry, one that extended beyond the pulpit and oftentimes unraveled on street corners in rundown neighborhoods. Reggie White, the NFL's second all-time sacks leader, whose death in 2004 shocked the entire NFL community, was one of the most decorative defensive players the game has seen. Nicknamed the Minister of Defense during his senior year in college because of his Christian ministry as an ordained minister and his defensive prowess, he spent an illustrious 15-year career in the NFL. In this video, we're going to take a look into the life and career of Reggie White. But before we begin, guys, if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I primarily make NFL content, so if you enjoy the NFL as much as I do, take the time to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, as it allows me to continue to keep producing this content for you guys. Also, for any video recommendations, you can send me a tweet, and I'll see what I can do there. Anyways, back to the video. Born on December 19, 1961 in Chattanooga, Tennessee, Reggie played high school football at Howard High School under coach Robert Pullman, a former defensive lineman at Tennessee. During his senior year, White recorded 140 tackles, 10 sacks, and received All-American honors. After high school, Reggie played college football at Tennessee from 1980 to 1983. During his time there, White became involved with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and expressed an interest in becoming an evangelist in his sophomore year. On the gridiron, Reggie immediately saw success. However, in his junior season, White was hampered with an ankle injury that limited his production. Determined to improve upon what he considered a disappointing junior campaign, White exploded in his senior year, registering 100 tackles and setting a school's single season record, 15 sacks. After his college football career, White was chosen by the Memphis Showboats in the 1984 USFL Territorial Draft. The opportunity to play pro ball in his hometown state and to be closer to his then-girlfriend and later wife was something he just couldn't pass. At Memphis, he played two seasons and racked up 23 and a half sacks, one safety, and one forced fumble recovered for a touchdown. When the USFL collapsed in 1985, the Philadelphia Eagles held Reggie's NFL rights and signed him to a four-year, $1.85 million contract. Upon starting for the Eagles, White made an immediate impact, producing 10 tackles and two and a half sacks in his very first game. By the end of his first year, he amassed 13 sacks and was named NFC Defensive Rookie of the Year. Standing 6 foot 5 and 300 pounds, Reggie White was widely known for his signature hum move, whereby he would lift opposing offensive linemen off the ground with a push from his inside arm. Throughout his career, this move would stifle offenses for which they had no answer for. Have you ever seen anything like his hump move? No. Just, Have you no. ever seen anything like that? You take a 310 yeah. pound man and you do this and lift both feet off the ground. Off the ground. Off the ground. Up. With that being said, Reggie was one of the most well-respected players in the league, and as Shannon Sharp alluded to earlier in the intro, he was a player that most others in the league would simply not speak in vain. However, in an interesting article I found, there was one play that simply summed up Reggie, according to a story from former Eagles teammate Mike Golick. In the middle of a game, a young offensive tackle started talking trash to Reggie White and swore at him profusely. Reggie responded by saying, don't you cuss me. This got the young lineman talking more and more, swearing at Reggie. Each time, Reggie replied with the same answer, don't you cuss me. Eventually, Clyde Simmons, Mike Golick, and Seth Joyner attempted to calm Reggie down as they could see how mad he was getting, but Reggie was able to keep his cool. In response, Reggie simply told the young lineman, Jesus is coming. Before he lined up for the next play, Golick told the guard in front of him, just to let you know, I'm taking a playoff, I need to see this. As a young offensive lineman approached the line of scrimmage, he continued to talk trash and cuss at Reggie. Once they got into their stances, Reggie repeated, Jesus is coming. 
When the ball was snapped, Reggie yelled, here comes Jesus, and hit the lineman in the chest, shoving him back into the quarterback for a sack. Reggie then stood over the young lineman and said, I told you, don't cuss me. In 1987, as White's career was taking off, the Eagles would draft Miami defensive end Jerome Brown, a player who White had a close relationship from the past. The two first met years before, while Reggie was at the University of Tennessee, volunteering as a counselor and coach, and Jerome as a high school athlete attending a football camp there. Although the two were very different in personality, they would hit it off, and together, along with Clyde Simmons, Mike Pitts, Seth Joyner, Mike Golick, under the guidance of head coach Buddy Ryan, formed one of the best defenses in the late 80s and early 90s. However, Philly's gangrene defense were unable to turn that dominance into playoff success as they went 0-3 in the playoffs under Ryan. After Buddy Ryan's axing, things only got worse for the Eagles as on opening day in the 1991 season, starting QB Randall Cunningham suffered an injury that would see him ruled out for the rest of the season. And later in that offseason, tragic news broke out that Jerome Brown had died in an automobile accident along with his nephew, Gus Brown. During the time this news broke out, Reggie White was at Veterans Stadium as a guest speaker for the Billy Graham crusade. Reggie was told of Jerome's death moments before he took the stage and broke the news to the Philly faithful. Today, I lost a great friend. Philadelphia lost a great player. Jerome Brown died today. You know, this man was a very special man to me. His family were very special people. Out of all the stuff that you heard about Jerome Brown and the things said about him and even the negative stuff, this man was one of the greatest people I ever met and knew in my life. After the funeral, Reggie White and teammate Keith Jackson vowed to build a community center to honor Brown in his hometown of Brooksville, Florida. And in the following week, Reggie alongside teammates dedicated the 92 season to Jerome. After starting the season 4-0, the Eagles won 11 games and a wildcard berth. In the wildcard game against the Saints, they pulled off a 36-20 road playoff win. However, the following week versus the Cowboys, the Eagles came up short, losing 34-10. After that devastating loss, many Philly fans wondered if White was re-signing as he was about to hit free agency. After a long free agency tour, Reggie White eventually signed with the Green Bay Packers. With the Packers, Reggie's dominance continued as he recorded double-digit sacks in four of his six seasons there, and at the time became the all-time sacks leader for the Packers. In the 1996 season, Reggie would soon find success in the playoffs with the Packers as they went on to win the Super Bowl. Reggie played a large role in Super Bowl 31 with a total of three sacks, and it would be his only championship he shared at any level. And in the 1998 season, he was named the NFL Defensive Player of the Year for the second time. Shortly after, Reggie White retired missing the 1999 season but would come out of retirement for one more year with the Carolina Panthers, where he played all 16 games and recorded five and a half sacks. At the time of his retirement, White was the NFL's all-time sacks leader with 198 sacks. White also recorded 19 fumbles and three touchdowns. His nine consecutive seasons from 1985 to 1993, where he amassed at least 10 sacks, remains an NFL record. Following his retirement, one day after Christmas Day on 2004, Reggie was rushed to a hospital after waking up gasping for air. Shortly after, he was pronounced dead as he succumbed to cardiac arrhythmia. Medical examiners said the likely cause was a cardiac and pulmonary sarcoidosis White had lived with for years. The following year in 2005, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Green Bay Packers, and the University of Tennessee retired White's number 92 jersey. At the time, White became the fifth Packer to have his number retired by the franchise. And on August 5th, 2006, Reggie White was enshrined at a ceremony into the Pro Football Hall of Fame as a first ballot Hall of Famer. His widow, Sarah, delivered her husband's acceptance speech after being introduced by their son, Jeremy. Today, Reggie White is considered by many to be one of the greatest defensive players in NFL history. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. When Steve Young came to San Francisco, uh, he had played against Reggie White in the, in the old USFL.
have a lot of respect to think that he was as good as he was. We didn't know. The veteran guys were like, yeah, 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 prove it. We finally made it to the field, and he was a wrecking ball.